Blog Talk Radio. Muzzin dropped it to nobody. Just rolled through everybody. Prop came back to get it. Down to 23 seconds left to go. Senators have time for one more rush. 1-1 one, one game here in the third period. Hooked into the middle. They'll send it to the near side. Trying to get to Carlson who is cutting in. Shot save. Welcome, everybody, to the Wet Island Post Game Show for November 11th, 2016, the Los Angeles Kings at the Ottawa Senators. <clears throat> I figured I'd begin with that, because to be, to be quite honest with you, I don't, I don't even really know where to start. You know, I, I have a format into which I do these shows, and like I'm, I'm going to get into that same exact format, but it's just... Look, there, there's going to be games where the rug gets swept out from under you. Over the course of an 82-game season, there's going to be games like the ones that we witnessed tonight. The thing of it is, 15 games in, the Kings are 7-8. and eight. There's too many times where I'm going to come on here and just say, okay, relax. Everything's going to be fine. The Kings are a good hockey team. I was, I was the guy saying this when the Kings dropped the first three games. Well, now we're 15 in. Now, I'm, just, it's, I'm not saying that it's time to like press a panic button or anything like that. But it's we, we are 15 in. So, what, I mean, I said it when, it was, when there were three games in. There was plenty of games left now. Well, now we're 15 in. So how many how many more games does it is it, is it going to take for us to go okay we really desperately need a change and I and I know that people out there like Kings fans out there are going to say like well, okay well wait till Gabbert yes we do need Mary and Gabbert back and I know people out there are going to say well it's unfortunate because our top goaltender went down well yeah I mean maybe but. We didn't lose tonight because of goaltending. I have an issue with the line combinations tonight. We didn't lose tonight because of, uh, of Daryl Sutter's line combinations. Let me just say one thing about the, our goaltending situation. We, I agree that we do miss Jonathan Quick. I, I totally agree with it. But we agree, we probably agree for different reasons. I think we miss Jonathan Quick because his best quality is that the club believes in him and the club wants to play for him not not saying they don't want to play for the other two goaltenders that's not what I'm saying so everybody out there who, who said like I'm not saying they they don't want to play for a guy like Zatkoff or Budai what I am saying is they they love to play in front of Jonathan Quick and quite simply he's he's just not there right now So there, there is a lack of belief amongst amongst the boys. I fully believe that they 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 don't believe in the goaltenders that are playing between the pipes right now. Whether it be Zatkoff, Budai, Campbell, whoever it is, they have a full on belief when Jonathan quicks in the net. So at seven and eight, yes, we are we are depleted by injuries. I don't think that that's why we lost tonight. But we definitely, we desperately need the players that we're missing. The reason we lost tonight, I mean, look, I, as I said, like, I don't think it was a goaltending issue. Obviously, Peter Budai made a mess of that Mark Stone game winner, a complete mess of it. So, <laughs> technically, you actually could put it on goaltending tonight. But, you know, Jeff Zatkoff was... was very, very good. Unorthodoxically, that's not a word, but he was very unorthodoxically good. Um, and then actually, I think that, that this type of game, it was very, until the last three minutes, it was a very, very awkward game. And Jeff Zatkoff is a very awkward playing goaltender. So he was actually 
<laughs> it fit his, he was in uh, his world. That actually fit him. He was pitching a shutout because he was an awkward goalie playing an awkward game. It, it felt normal to him. When Budai came in, Budai didn't necessarily play that bad. Obviously, the, uh, the Zach Smith equalizer wasn't his fault. It was just a good tip. But he, he totally made a mess of it with six seconds left when Marks don't put the winner in. <clears throat> and not to be completely, uh, not to be unfair to Peter Budai, uh, on the first goal, I actually thought Jake Muzzin got interfered with. On the first one, I don't think he got interfered with on the second one. So I would, you know, if I'm working in Toronto, not to be biased, I would take one of those goals. One of those goals needs to come off the board because I actually think he was. Uh, Jake Muzzin was impeded, but then uh, his uh, the him being impeded impeded Peter Budai on the on the first goal. But that didn't happen. The Ottawa Senators win two to one in a game that really the Kings had no business losing. Anze Kopitar got hurt. He went down the tunnel twice. Uh, all I could think about when I saw uh, Kobotar go down the tunnels, what a stupid hockey game to get injured in. Like a nothing hockey game. Nothing was happening. Literally nothing happened. Even when the Kings scored, it was a nothing goal. It just happened to go in. Nothing was happening. Nobody was doing anything. I will in my notes. I have the least amount of notes that I've ever took for a hockey game when I've been uh, doing uh, Wet Island shows. Barely anything was happening. And Anze Kopitar just, on a simple play, is, ends up clutching himself. And now we, we might be without Kopitar, Zatkoff, which he's not going to be the starter anyway, but, and then uh, and Brady McNabb, Andrioff, and the list goes on. Stupid game for him to get injured in. Hosa ties the game against the uh, Capitals with uh, 22 seconds left, if anyone like, is, cares. But I have it on the TV, so I figured I might as well report it. Again, as I said, line combinations uh, are, are the re- uh, not a reason why we lost the game. But I am starting to take issue with these line combinations. Here they are, though. Purcell, Kopitar, Pearson. Oh, it's the same as I've been saying always. Uh, Dwight King, Jeff Carter, Toffoli. Brown, Dowd, Zedaguchi, and uh, Clifford, Shore, and Trevor Lewis. Dowdy, Forbert, Muzzin, Martinez. That Muzzin, Martinez has to that, – that pair cannot be a pair anymore. Jake Muzzin, obviously he's not as talented or – he's not as good as Brent Burns, but he's Brent Burnsy in as, as far as the way he actually plays. So he needs a guy that – he, he can't play with a guy like Alec Martinez who also likes to get up ice. And you're seeing it. They're, they're not good defensively because they, there's not a, a, a common goal. Like they, both of them want to get up ice. So that means they would prefer not to defend. So you need a guy, whether it be uh, with, with Alec or with Muzzin, but you need a guy who's, gonna, who's willingly going to defend. And Jake Muzzin, to me, is the second best defenseman on the team. I think that he needs a partner who is a, a more stay at home ish. I don't think he, uh, I don't think Alec Martinez benefits Jake Muzzin or vice versa, whatever you choose. But either one of those guys, they don't need each other. They need somebody else. And that they've been, again, against Montreal, they were bad. They've been bad for a while. That's not a good defensive pairing. And actually, they, they've, they've become more of a liability than anything else defensively. Uh, Tom Gilbert and Kevin Gravel with Jeff Zatkoff in goal for at least... I, I, I missed the exact point of when he went out. But uh, Jeff Zatkoff started the game. Peter Budai finished the game in miserable fashion. So I suppose we'll go through this uneventful game. Riveting stuff tonight from Scotiabank. If it's even called that anymore. I'm unsure. The best chance, actually, the best chance, the best scoring chance the Kings actually had was Dustin Brown, like, well, very, very quickly into the game, point blank. But it's Dustin Brown, so where, he's, where is he putting it? Uh, not knocking Dustin Brown. I think that he had actually, had actually, I think he had a good game tonight. But he had the best chance, 
and Craig Anderson made a good save. Let me say a quick thing about Craig Anderson. Very, very underrated goaltender. Very underrated. And that kind of that kind of stinks for the Kings to have to uh, walk into Carey Price last night. Best goaltender in the world. And then Carey Price, or uh, Craig Anderson, I'm sorry. Craig Anderson, a uh, very underrated goaltender. Frustration galore tonight, honestly. Um, I want to hear it. I want to hear your frustrations. If you happen to be listening to the show live, the number is 602-753-1528. I'll say it again. 602-753-1528. If you have fun. Uh, bro, I'm just taking calls as they come. So if you do want to call, I'll take it right away. There's no, like, there's no certain time where, okay, let's go to the phones. You want to call, you want to vent, I'll take it. Kyle Turris trip at 533. Uh, nothing really comes of it. A great chance. Uh, Nick Dow has a great chance on this power play, and Setaguchi has a chance to bury the rebound, but he just uh, kind of misses it. Um. <clears throat> Kopitar has a chance. He delays, delays, delays. I don't feel like Kopitar has enough uh, faith in his shot for some reason. Because Kopitar had a bunch of chances tonight. And neither of them found the back of the net. Uh, Dowd had a beautiful move. A beautiful little pull and drag move and rang one off the post. Nick Dowd is so freaking good. Like Nick Dowd's creativity. God, he stands alone almost. He just, the thing about Nick Dowd is, first of all, like, I, I love his size. He's not out there, like, he actually can bang a little bit, too. Nick, like, but what I love about Nick Dowd is offensively and going forward, he just brings new ideas to the table. And the Lord knows the Kings need some new offensive ideas. And Nick, Brown, and Nick Dowd totally brings that. I will say this, again, when I was talking about the line combinations, yes, they, they were not the reason we lost tonight. But when you, it's just too, there's not enough on either of these lines. So when I was talking to my cousin today, we were talking about switching these line combinations up. I would love to see Nick Dow between skill instead of with these two wild card guys like Dustin Brown and Devin Setaguchi, who just kind of, it, it, it's like, it's like balls to the wall, but there's just not enough skill there. I would love to see like a mixture of Kopitar Peterson, Toffoli, Carter, Dowd, and Teddy Purcell. Whatever combination you want to make out of those six guys, that needs to be our top six. The way, now, what you do with the bottom six, now I would love to see Lewis and Dustin Brown on a line on the bottom six because I think that they would be a handful. They would be totally annoying to play against. So how about we just we, let's go top heavy, and especially when Gabbert comes back, let's go offensive top heavy in the top six. And just have the bottom six buy into roles. Wear down the other team's defensemen and do your damnedest to not get scored on. I think that's what the Kings need to do. But right now, with like Purcell and Pearson aren't doing Kopitar any favors. Uh, Dwight King is not doing uh, Jeff Carter and Tyler Toffoli any favors. Dustin Brown and Devin Setaguchi are not doing Nick Dowd any favors. So how about we put our best offensive guys with our best Offensive guys, Capitals winning overtime, which is great for my wager. <clears throat> Awkward turnover behind the net uh, that led to a Bobby Ryan chance. Good save by Jeff Zakoff. Zakoff makes a couple of saves at the at the end of that first period. A uh, fourteen to eight shots in favor of the Kings. Fourteen to ten in favor of the Kings as far as faceoff goes. So actually, they really. Um, to be completely honest with you, even though it was uh, fairly uneventful, the Kings probably deserved to score in that first period, but it didn't. <laughs> so if you if, if you deserve to score but you don't score, there's nothing to talk about. Start of the second period, Jeff Carter, <clears throat> Dwight King makes it one nothing. So that one went right through everybody. Good pass made by Setaguchi. Puck loose, high, just rolled up high. And it'll be the Senators back the other way. Puck check away. 
Rossford had the opportunity, fanned on with the new ice, intercepted and a turnaround. Crystal didn't get the shot off. Carter in, backhander, and he scores! Backhand chance on a turnover, and the Kings are on the board as Carter picks up number six. Purcell so Ottawa turns it over, and uh, actually, Teddy Purcell, I think, tries to make a move around the defender, but it accidentally falls to Jeff Carter. And Jeff Carter takes a backhanded chance that goes off of Dwight King's knee and into the net. So, <clears throat> Dwight King locked on that top six now with his beautiful snipe goal. Dwight King has two goals at this season. One of them went off his foot. One of them went off his knee. Sniper. God, I hope he stays in the top six. Actually, and also, like I think one of the first goals that made it like six or seven nothing against Toronto. What's he doing with really, really talented players in Jeff Carter and Todd Toffoli? What's he doing? One nothing though. So I guess good on Dwight. Uh, Ottawa, uh, Ottawa almost scores the next shift because that's typical Kings fashion. As soon as we score, we, we really try to uh, give it right back, like instantly. Thank God it didn't happen this time. Um, it was a really good challenge by Zatkoff. On the, 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 the scoring chance I'm talking about, Zatkoff was very uh, aggressive, came out and challenged and actually made a nice save. Uh, delay of game at 401 on Zach Smith. Kopitar has a great chance on this power play. The Kings moved the puck. On their first two power plays, they moved the puck very well. But on this specific power play, Kopitar was in practically all alone. And tried to go low block, which is the right shot. Craig Anderson made a nice save. But uh, Kopitar obviously is snake bitten, and he's obviously thinking about being snake bitten. And which, which is, is very unfortunate because we're going to need him to score. Muzzin goes off at interference at 734. Another big save. Uh, there was a rebound that came out. Oh, Zakoff made a huge pad save on this penalty kill. Very, very unorthodox, this Jeff Zakoff, but he was getting it done. He, again, as I said at the top of the show, he is just, he was in his comfort zone with the game being awkward. It's unfortunate that he had to come out. Um, too many men at 9-12 gave Ottawa a very short 5-on-3. The Kings killed the 5-on-3. And then uh, Kopitar and Toffoli have what, what should have been a 2-on-0. And this actually should have iced the game. But Kopitar was a little bit gassed. You know, Kopitar is not uh, a very speedy player to begin with. He's not slow, but he's not, he doesn't have a lot of speed. He's a very average skater when it comes to, uh, to speed. And Eric Carlson, like, well, very easily caught up to him. Tossed it enough to uh, deteriorate Carlson. Carpenter basically had a breakaway from the far blue line in. It just happened to miss. Big, big chance. And that really could have iced the game. You know, what they said about 45 seconds ago, Kopitar is snake bitten. So something, I don't know, I don't know what it takes to come out of that. A goal, a lucky goal, a Trevor Lewis accidental type goal like that. Something. Lewis goes off for tripping at 16:36. Nothing comes of it. Uh, 24 to 18 shots of LA for in favor of LA at the end of the second period. 25-19 of faceoffs. Uh, just really quickly, now that the I'm going to give you the stats at the end of the game. The shots are 33 to 33 and even draw, and 31 to 36 in favor of Ottawa. So the Kings really did themselves no favors by taking their foot off the gas pedal because they thought that they could hold a one nothing lead. And they thought, apparently that's enough. Guess what? It's not. Total and utter disappointment with the way the Kings played that third period. Sitting back, prevent-wise, I understand it's their third game in four nights. But a part of you will have to go out there. It's only a one-goal lead. It's one nothing. Go take the game by the juggler. They didn't do that. In fact, Ottawa did. Ottawa ran rugged on us in the third period. And obviously uh, now 
Kopitar, uh, uh, towards the start of the third period, got hurt uh, on, on what looked like a nothing play. If you remember that play? Uh, uh, we were playing Colorado at the end of the year. This is the, the, the first series we had against the Sharks. And we, we missed Kopitar. And really, it was the same type of injury. Kopitar gets hurt on, like, nothing plays. I hope he's okay. I mean, he, he, he made attempts to come back, but just went right back down the tunnel. Again, just what a stupid nothing game to potentially get seriously hurt in. If he goes down, if he's out for an extended period of time, it's bye-bye season, and it's time to sell. I swear to God. I mean, that's, 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 not, that's not like knee-jerk reaction stuff. If Kopitar is out for an extended period of time, ship off some of these guys, it's sell time, and let's try again next season. Dead serious. So I, I really, really hope nothing for the I, – if that MRI comes back and it's, and it's bad news for the Kings, then let's take a rain check on this season. Uh, Helter Skelter in the Kings' end. After that happened, I mean, Otto was buzzing the whole entire third period. Uh, I thought maybe we'd, we would hang on, but Zach Smith equalizes at uh, 16.06 of the third period. Long, long shift for the Kings. Backhander, centering pass, gets blocked, and it's cleared out by Purcell. The Kings still have their timeout, so in that situation, you can take that icing and maybe have a timeout to rest. Right back in on the shot off the blockers. Clifford again takes the opportunity. Found himself open as he just spun around and took it. And the Senators putting some heat on again. Down low. Shot safe. And they score. On the rebound. They tied it up. Zach Smith. Two chances. And the second one not to be denied. Zach Smith at 1606 from Peugeot. God, bro, these French-Canadian names. I swear to God, as I said the last night, I'm not trying to mispronounce French-Canadian names like, you know, like Don Cherry does on purpose. I just I straight up don't know. Peugeot. Uh, Zach Smith from Peugeot and Eric Carlson at 1606. And uh, I was thinking overtime. I felt safe, okay. They, they, they broke through. We'll get to overtime where the Kings are actually pretty pretty good in for whatever reason. We're good at gimmicks. We're good at the shootout. We're good at overtime. Uh -uh. Nope. Mark Stone, 1953, wins the game for the Ottawa Senators. Muzzin dropped it to nobody. Just rolled through everybody. Prop came back to get it. Down to 23 seconds left to go. Senators have time for one more rush. 1-1 one, one game here in the third period. Hooked into the middle. They'll send it to the near side, trying to get the Carlson, who is cutting in. Shot safe. Mark Stone at 1953 from Carlson and Peugeot again. Game over. Bye-bye. Drive home safely. Bro, I don't know what uh, Peter Budai is fighting this shot off for. It was nothing shot. Actually, if he, if he let it go, Carlson's shot would have rang off the glass and possibly came out of the zone. Budai, Budai fights it and just drops, and Mark Stone just comes out through the crease and scores. Um... What I would fail to mention on the, on the Zach Smith equalizer, I do think that Jake Muzzin got impeded with. I think that's interference. I actually think it's a penalty on the guy whoever impeded uh, Jake Muzzin. Jake Muzzin just got put on his ass for no reason, out of nowhere. On, the, on, on, the, on Stone's winner, Jake Muzzin is slightly impeded with, but really that didn't uh, it, it, it didn't affect the goal or anything like that. I do think it affected the equalizer. So, as I said, you know, I said this already before, but it, <laughs> one of the two, one of the two was interference. 
But you know, it, uh, there's a there's a history. I think like being uh, I'm not being a conspiracy guy here, but I remember recent uh, not recently, but when remember when Ryan Smith clearly his stick was under the bar and he tipped one in. The Kings were supposed to beat Ottawa, and it went to the control room in Toronto, and they unexplicably called it no goal. I don't know if you guys remember the goal that I'm talking about, but I do think there's a Canadian bias uh, when it comes to the Toronto control room. Especially when, I mean, that's just Ottawa, too. Can you imagine how bad it is when, if, if, if it goes to review in Montreal? Again, not to play conspiracy. A conspiracy isn't why we lost tonight. The Kings just lost. Peter Boudet made a mess of that. That's why we lost. I'm not, I'm not necessarily blaming Peter Boudet either. Because with no warm-up, sitting on the bench, watching that snooze fest of a hockey game, and having to come in in a high-pressure situation, you know, I don't blame him. But, God, what a mess. And I, I think it just goes back to what I was saying before. The, the, the Kings don't believe in the goaltenders they have on the roster right now. Available, I mean. There's no belief. That's Jonathan Quick's best quality. They believe in him. So maybe I, you know, I possibly said it wrong earlier. But I don't, I don't think they play less hard in front of uh, goaltenders who aren't quick. But there's less belief. So there's something that happens when, when you have a goalie that that you don't believe in, and you're a player on the bench, and you see a, a goal go in, you turn to your teammate to left or right of you and go, "Oh God." Here we go. Now, when you have a guy that you believe in, like Jonathan Quick, and a goal goes in, as a player, you go, okay, let's fight. Let's get one back for him. It's just a completely different mindset. I know people out there, the analytics guys, are probably not going to understand that. But that, but that, that really is the thought process. From, it's, it's not it's just like, a, like a junior hockey thought process. It, it goes all the way up to the top level. You have to have a belief in your starting goaltender, and the Kings just right. I, for, they just don't right now. Now, uh, whether whether that that disbelief is is fair or just, that's another topic for a different day. I could probably fill a whole hour on uh, what I think about Jonathan Quick as a goaltender, but I'm not going to do that because he's not playing goalie right now. Zach Koff and Budai are. <sighs> That's a frustrating one. Really, uh, I just I, I bl- I, the Kings have no one to blame with themselves. You got to go out there in the third period and take the game by the horns, and they didn't do it. Player by player review. Purcell uh, accidentally had a nice pass. I don't think Purcell was bad. I think Kopitar was pretty good on that long. I missed a lot of missed a lot of quality chances on Zay Kopitar, but I think that Andre Kopitar was very, very good. Uh, Tanner Pearson. Look, he just doesn't fit on that line. Pearson fits with Jeff Carter and Tonto Foley. But here, here, here's the whole thing. Um but obviously the Kings kind of uh, struggle to score goals this year. Who's your best goal scorer on this? On the, who's the best goal scorer on the Kings? For my money, it's Jeff Carter. Okay, so I wouldn't have Jeff Carter be playing center because what happens when you play center for this hockey club? There's uh, it, there's a, there's so much responsibility that comes with playing center for the Los Angeles Kings that if a guy like Jeff Carter is playing it, he has to focus on other things. Than, than simply just focusing on scoring goals. I would definitely have Jeff Carter play on the wing. And when you have a guy like Nick Dowd, who can is a natural center, I would probably put him in the middle. And stop putting him with Brown instead of Gucci, who are, again, as I said, complete wild cards. You never know what they're going to do. I would put Nick Dowd with actual skill. And Jeff Carter has actual skill. Tanner Pearson doesn't fit with Kopi and Purcell. So how about something else? 
Go top heavy. Go with your best offensive guys. But the whole point of that was, I don't think Jeff Carter should be playing center. It's just too much. He's doing a good job at what he at, at what he's being being asked to do. Make no mistake. By the way, I always do man of the match. It is Jeff Carter because Jeff Carter had a really good game tonight. He did everything that Jeff Carter barely ever doesn't do his job. He was great defensively. He's always been great defensively. But it's just that guy is our best goal scorer. I don't want him to have all like I don't want him to have Anze Kopitar responsibilities. I want him to score goals. Okay, so I would not put, have him on center. Uh, Toffoli was fine, I think, tonight. Cop- uh, Toffoli is a very, very um, – when he wants <laughs> – in the offensive zone, he's very quick to get out loose pucks because he, he, he's a goal scorer and he sees red. Uh, Dustin Brown did not play bad tonight. Nick Dowd, obviously. Thought, this might be our, our best line, and it all goes through Nick Dowd. Like, could you imagine if Nick Dowd played with some, uh, between some skill – Look out, Setaguchi. Um, it's he's. Uh, I don't know how many games it takes, but I'm gonna say you know I'm a big fan of his story. Not a big fan of his play so far. Uh, Clifford, whole lot of nothing. Nick Shore, that whole line, whole lot of nothing. Drew Doughty, just okay. Derek Forbert, just okay. Jake Muzzin and Alex Martinez should not be a pair anymore. They're dismal uh, defensively. We we have to break that pair apart. Kevin Gravel is is very, very steady. Big fan of Kevin Gravel. And uh, Tom Gilbert, you know, after being suspended, you know what it's going to take? When when you're out of game action for even just even the slightest amount of time, it's going to take a game to get acclimated. So, and I don't think uh, Tom Gilbert had that good of a game tonight, but uh, that's to be expected when you, when you've been sitting out, uh, Jeff Zakoff had a hell of a game <laughs> as unorthodox as his style is. He, he really had a hell of a game. Peter Budai did not have a hell of a game. He made some okay saves, but God, how about, it, it, I don't I don't know why he's fighting off that Mark or that Eric Carlson shot. Just catch it. It's a nothing shot. And now we lost. Ugh. So, you know, but the, it, it, hopefully the Kings are, like, getting these, these nonsense, uh, nonsense losses out of their system now so they don't happen later. But it just, it, I mean, who's to say that, that it's not going to continue? We got Winnipeg on Sunday at 11 a.m. Well, that's not good. Everyone knows we're great at – we're not even good at 1 p.m. Uh, 1 p.m. games on the West Coast. <laughs> How the hell are we going to be good at 11 a.m. in Winnipeg on the East Coast? I, you know, I, I hope for the best, but dear God. Anyways. That's it for the White Island Post Game Show. Uh, the Kings uh, uh, they lose two one in a heartbreaking loss. Tomorrow there will be a show. It'll, be, it'll, it'll either be pick two socks where I just rant. I think that's what, what it's going to be, or uh, uh, a classic Kings game review. We'll see. But we'll definitely see you on Sunday after the Kings visit Winnipeg at 11 a.m. Good night, everybody. Be safe. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like, breakup R&B intense. I thought you said you love a sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. Universal Studios Hollywood is introducing the California Neighbor Pass. For the neighborly price of just $119 online, you get over 200 days in the park. So swing by and share some laughs with your neighbors, like the Minions. Or Homer Simpson. Mm, 
so nuts. Even go on an adventure with Harry Potter. Stay close and follow me. Visit UniversalStudiosHollywood.com to get a